Red Man Group Patriarchs Edition. It's been a little bit. We've had about two months off, but we're back. Now that two month hiatus, that's because fathers are out there doing fatherly things. They're out there being men, leading their families, going to practices, games, all sorts of things, leading the family to greater places because that's what patriarchs do. But now we're back. And every other Thursday from this Thursday on, we're going to be remaining back until the 21 convention this October. Now today, we've got Bobby Dino and Evolve Phil. Gentlemen, welcome to the panel. What's going on? How are you gentlemen doing this afternoon? Hey, thanks for having me, Hunter. I like how you both jumped in. Bobby, what's going on with you? Uh, Hey, uh, thank, thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to be here with, with you and Phil, uh, two guys that I enjoy spending time with. So this is awesome. Um, what's going on with me is I, I leave for Romania tomorrow. There's a war room summit. I'm doing a seminar there uh, along with, uh, I imagine, a few other people. And it's just going to be uh, a good time and an, and an opportunistic time to be had by all. So just really looking forward to doing that. Now, I know you're being modest and you're not trying to chill, but what is this about the two kings, you and Ivan? What 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 were we just discussing? Oh. The, the fat cigar that just was released? Yeah, I, I know I should probably bring that up, huh? Like put that in my mind. Uh, so <laughs> so just th thanks for that. Uh, and I'm here and for I you. Will thank you as well. Yeah. Uh, no, so just yesterday, just yesterday, we, we released a a cigar. It's a coil, a 60 ring coil, uh, Honduran. It's called Dewey Ray, which is Italian for two kings. And it's just this big, fat stogie. You know, it's just one of those G-sticks. Uh, when you're walking around, you want everybody to know that you're smoking a cigar. This is the one. And uh, it's, got a, it's got a good, moderate taste to it. And, and we're, we're excited. We're, we're excited to get it rolling. All right. So if you check out Ivan's account, if you check out Bobby's account, you're going to find links to this. I'm going to be buying some. You should as well. If you're a cigar guy, you got to try it out. We got to support our own. Phil, what's up, man? I know you've been busting your ass. It's summertime, getting after it. How you been, man? Man, I've been just fucking so blessed and excellent. It, just, it doesn't get any fucking better than the way it's been. Pardon my French. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just been a great summer. You know, school just started back for my little girl, and uh, she's uh, back on the – she's playing competitive volleyball, so – we're having a great time with that. And, uh, you know, summertime is obviously a busy time for me. You know, there's a lot of work going on and uh, just just stacking chips and getting ready to make some moves in the future here. And uh, it just can't be can't be any more grateful uh, for everything that I got going on. You know, it's, it's great to be on here tonight with you, Hunter, and, and, and you as well, Bobby. Congratulations on those cigars. I'm going to pick up a box myself. Thanks, man. And uh, I was looking forward to getting into the meat and potatoes of this discussion with you. And it's an important discussion. I mean, we look at this, you know, there's a lot of things going on. And what I really pride myself in and, you know, Anthony, and I can't be more appreciative. He gave me this platform and he pretty much said, this is your show. You can run with it. So I get to say whatever the fuck I want. And, <laughs> you know, Phil, Phil, you said pardon your French, man, we're going to, we'll never have a monetized video on this Woo! channel because I can't Thank keep you, you guys down. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, but it's a good thing, you know, way. because we're allowed to talk about the things that nobody else is talking about. Exactly. You know, all the fucks are done. We're not even a minute in. It's over. We're not making money, but let's actually make a difference, you know, and that's what it's about. We're going to actually make a difference in these men's lives. So there's a lot of channels that talk about divorce, a lot of channels that talk about custody. There are very few channels that talk about the raw, nitty gritty, down in the weeds, dirty, disgusting things that are going on, you know, when it comes to the legal like industry of tearing families apart. And for whatever reason, you know, sometimes it doesn't work between mom and dad. Sometimes, you know, things just, just out of control, out of your control happen. And, you know, the family's divided. Everybody wants the white picket fence. But there are so many stories about families being ripped in half, children being weaponized. And we're going to talk about that today. Not just that. You know, these two men are going to share their stories. And we're going to talk about ways you can be preventative. Ways that, if look, if mom and dad don't work out, that doesn't mean that your relationship with your child doesn't work out. You can maintain that relationship. We'll be talking about that tonight. We've got a few other guys that might be hopping in. And again, we are definitely going to be addressing all of the questions that you have in the, the chat. So if you've got a question, toss it out there. If you're looking for advice, toss it out there. I want to engage you guys in this because it's not just these two men. These two men have, have gone through the ringer. They've gone through their crucible and made it out. That's why they're here to share their story. 
If you're in the middle of that battle, though, now is a perfect time to get a, get a advice to get some some input from others that might be able to help you out. So don't go through this thinking you're a tough guy who doesn't need any help. Everybody needs help at times. So if you find yourself in that position, look, throw it on the chat. I'll toss it on the screen. One of these gentlemen or both will answer it or myself if there's anything I can bring. You know, we'll help you help yourself. So with that said, we're going to dive into this. So starting with Phil, let's do a, a quick backdrop as to, to what you've been through. You know, you've been through the divorce industry. You have a child. You know, how did it work from you knowing, look, this marriage isn't going to work out, but not losing that relationship with your daughter? <clears throat> so basically, when I saw the writing on the wall and it was early on, in our in our marriage i was like oh sheesh you know the facades all dropped and uh another human being started living in my house other than uh than the woman i married uh i basically we went through this this process of about two years of almost like cohabitating we were like roommates so the interesting thing is is uh Veda, uh, my child was she was four at the time you know, we, we pretty much didn't even sleep in the same bed, eat dinner together, anything, you know, so basically I immersed myself and I'm, I'm able to do that because I own my own business and I do my own thing. So, you know, I was always at school, take, pick up, cook dinner, soccer, everything. I was 100% there all the time. And, and my, my ex-wife chose to be, you know, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to work on my career. I'm going to empower myself and do that good stuff. So, um, you know, once once the divorce, once things really got south, uh, it happened on um, on Father's Day. Believe it or not, we had this big knockdown drag Jeez. out in front of my in front of my child. You know, I was like, you know, really, I mean, you're gonna pull this shit today? Are you being for real? And I suspect there was somebody dicking her on the side, and and that's fine because I hadn't dicked her in two years. You know what I'm saying? So go get it somewhere else if you got to. <laughs> You know, I was actually trying to hang in there for for my child, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of try and keep things normal and quiet. So w when the eruption happened, you know, I, I called my attorney and we went ahead and I filed divorce. And um, once I filed, I, I came home and um, I told her, I said, you know, since you're so unhappy here, why don't you go ahead and just pick everything in the house that you want? I'm going to go ahead and pay for a new new apartment of your choice. You just need to be within so many miles of the school so you can get her uh, to school on time and, and, and we'll work it out. So I moved her. I set up all her bills, gave her some cash flow to have. And um, the first night out of the house, my daughter stayed right here in this very house that I'm doing this podcast on right now. Now, I'm very fortunate, you know, because I've got family that's backed me majorly through this process, you know, as far as like sheltering my sheltering me and whatnot. And uh, how that uh, how that worked out was basically she got served, she got served at work and, and the fight was on, you know, and then once that fight kicked off, it went on for two years and it was a knockdown drag out who can spend the most money type of fight. So it started when my child was about four and a half and ended when she was six mm. and uh i came out on on the better side of what most folks don't come out on and that's pretty much how that whole cookie started crumbling there that's wild man you look at you know four years old at such a young young age so for you to maintain that level of you know normalcy Instead of her just seeing, you know, absolute war going on, like, all right, keep her normal. But like you said, you're serving her at work. You guys are having your throw down. But to hear it happen on Father's Day in front of the kid, you know, that's always the worst because it's in front of an innocent being. Like the kid is not a part of this. If you two were going to go at it, you know, you and this is best case. You want it to happen behind closed doors or when shit can't. But guess what? That's not reality. Reality is the kid does see this. Yet you're able to maintain that relationship. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But that's exactly, you know, why I wanted to talk about this because everybody wants it to be sunshine and rainbows and let's amicably spit, I mean, split. But I mean, look at it, shit happens. And you know what, in the real world, people throw down in front of their fucking children and they, the kids see those. And the only way you can remove that imprint is by imprinting something else further on down the line consistently. You know, you're always there and it kind of gets rid of that bad memory. Now with that, Bobby, let's talk about your story a little bit. 
I, I've heard some of it. It's just as wild, man. But let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. So I, I uh, got with my son's mom. It, it's, this was she was somebody that I, I started dating like right when I graduated from high school. It was like a couple months before. And about a few months into it, I was like, oh, this, yeah, I mean, I just wasn't, I could tell this broad was crazy, right? And I was like, oh, I need to kind of call this off. So I did. I called it off. Well, unbeknownst to me, she had stopped taking the pill that she was on a few weeks before, and she got pregnant with my son. So now coming from a background of my dad dying before I was born and I didn't want that to happen to some kid. I thought the right thing to do would be to stay with this girl. And uh, I ended up putting a ring on her finger and marrying her, right? Well, that was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. It lasted like a year. And I mean, it, it, the, putting the ring on her finger didn't make her sane. Like she was still crazy. I just married a crazy chick, you know? So uh, we ended up splitting up. And don't get me wrong, I, was, I, I wasn't the best person I could be either. Uh, I, I had my own issues that I had to work on and, and still to this day work on. Um, but I ended up doing my time and whatnot. And during the whole time I was doing, I, I was keeping contact with my son. I was having my family from, from some money I had giving him money, uh, so for, for child support and stuff like that. Well, when I came home, my ex became insanely jealous of the relationship I have with my current wife. And she started doing all this different stuff, like to where she was making fake threats while I was on parole saying, I'm going to call the cops and tell them you're holding my son hostage and you have an automatic weapon and you're threatening me. I mean, like just crazy stuff to where, thank God, other people heard it and I had witness to it. Otherwise, I could have been in real trouble, you know, um, and she put a bunch of poison in, in his brain, too. So as as cool as I tried to be with it. It got to the point to where um, I had to make a decision whether I was going to let a toxic person uh, try and mess up my life um, or if I was going to let this person use my son as an anchor to where she would be able to have a line to keep trying to fuck with me and mess with my life. So at that point, when it was like me risking going back, that's when I moved to Northern California. So there would be no whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like I'm on the other side of the state. Uh, you know, can't say anything. And, and since I did, and since I, I still talk to my son, but since I basically wrote the bad part of my life and family off, uh, things have only gone up. So in, in my opinion, that was the best thing I could have done. Uh, the, the, the heartbreak is that there was a, a, a damage in the relationship with, with my boy though. Well, I think that's one of the hardest parts. And that's what most of the men that go through this, that's where they're really caught up in something that, you know, we kind of have to directly address. It's kind of, it's not really the elephant in the room, you know, it's not the unspoken thing, but it kind of is, you know, you've got to admit like, look, this, this is not going to be the, you know, your mother and I ride out into the sunset and have a great life, you know, that we thought it would be like, here's reality. Look, we're splitting up. You're only going to see me part time, but we can still foster a relationship. And, and that's, you know, again, it goes back to what's real versus what we want it to be. You know, we've got to, we've got to talk about, you know, getting punched by reality because it's much better to be punched than to be kissed by a lie because all that does is just kick the can down the road until it gets even worse. You know, and I think if either of you gentlemen had chosen to try to chase the lie, it would have ruined any possible relationship you could have had with your kid because it would have been so much worse if you had, you had waited and like, no, things will be fine. Things will be fine. You know, the blue pill ideology, you know, she's the one. And then all of a sudden it's like, look, your kids hate you. Your wife hates you. Everybody hates you because you decided to, to be the nice guy instead of doing what a man has to do. And I think that's, that's why it's worked for the two of you because you did the hard shit and you faced it head on and you fucking came out on top. Now with that, you know, again, to anybody in the chat that's, that's going on, you know, if you have questions or anything, you want to toss our way, we'll answer it. But moving forward, have either of you had, actually, Bobby, I'll let you go first on this one. Have either of you had the kids come to you and give you feedback on the divorce or feedback on what it's like to be the child of balancing between you and the mom? Yes, most definitely. And I don't want to, I mean, on the off chance that somebody watches this video that may not be someone that's as keen to it as we are, um, I don't want to get them in trouble. But uh, I've, I've um, received the feedback that 
he understands uh, my position. I'll just put it like that. <laughs> um, he, he knows what, you know, I, I mean, he's got his own two eyes, you know, his own two ears. Uh, he, he, he knows what's what, and he sees who's doing what, and he's making his own judgments, and I'm proud of him. That's awesome. Phil, mm -hmm. have you had those conversations? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's you know I have a little girl, you know, so it's it's a little bit different than having a, a boy, you know. There's a little bit more sensitivity there, unfortunately, uh, when it comes to those feelings and them coming out. So for the longest time, she she really struggled with it, and and what I mean by that, it wasn't necessarily that she struggled with us being divorced. You know, uh, her mom was a specialist at alienating me. And, and playing the victim, you know, well, oh, your dad's got it so good. He owns his own business, your dad, your dad, you know, and uh, with that bitter attitude and that poisonous talk all the time, it really affected my child. And, you know, I, I really don't care, you know, if my ex-wife watches this video because it's probably going to be a slap in the face. I hope she does actually, but the, uh, <laughs> um, the uh the moral of the story because she really <laughs> she damaged she damaged actually damaged our child with that behavior you know the questions i would get her uh, you know i started dating again I, I waited a while and then you know my i got remarried eventually and uh, i dated my current wife for three years before we got married after that after that relationship you know for that's a long time to date someone you know, and I put that woman through the ringer as far as, you know, I wanted to make sure that this one wasn't going to flip flop on me. You know what I mean? Because my first wife, you know, she really, you know, she flip flopped like night and day. It's crazy. But the, uh, the, the, the question I got most off was, um, do you miss my mom? No, I don't miss your mom, baby. I don't miss it at all. Um, uh, I wish her all the luck in the world, but I don't miss her. Another one is, uh, uh, do you hate my mom? No, I don't hate your mom, baby. I don't hate her at all. She just cannot get along with your dad, unfortunately. And you saw that. And I said, look at how peaceful our life is now. And uh, another question would be, because um, see, my ex-wife, you know, she obviously hopped back on the carousel and it's been a nightmare train wreck ever since. I mean, it really has. It's, you know, what a lot of people talk it, on Twitter and, and other platforms, it's like, dang, that's my ex-wife. You know what I mean? And um, she goes, do you think my mom will ever get remarried again because you're remarried? And and I said, well, I can't answer that. That's up to her, you know. And for the longest time, you know, once I married my wife, you know, and we're all living together as a family and doing our thing, you know, there was there was there was times where you know, my child really struggled with identifying uh, as, a, as a, my wife now is as as an authority figure in the house as a parent, you know, because the, the negative toxic spewing that my ex-wife was constantly doing about myself and my wife. And, um, you know, she it, it, it's taken a long time for her. My, my wife now actually has had to prove herself, prove her worth through that time in our family. It's been eight years now. I mean, sheesh, it's a long time, you know, I've been there, never failed her. And, um, you know, these questions have really died off now, so to speak, you know, as time has passed and, you know, she has matured. She, her eyes are opening now. I mean, she's going to be 15 on September 11th and, you know, she really can conceptualize what's right and what's wrong, you know, and it's, but yes, it was a trip, you know. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, by the time they're in their twenties, they get a little bit more jaded too. Like when they're their late teens, early twenties, cause that's like how my son was like when he was that age, like that, like it kind of petered off, but I remember him going through the same kind of thing around then. But now he's just like, it's, it's like talking to a, an adult about and he's just very very matter of fact and he's just like yeah blah 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 and you're just like okay you know i'm not going to try and defend 
uh, that lady, you know, I mean, if he's got his feelings about her, then good, good for you, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So I want to point out, we've got 27, I'm assuming men watching right now. And <laughs> this video is eventually going to have over a thousand views on it. And with that, mm -hmm. when you were talking about your daughter, your, the tone of your voice changed, the, like the fire in your eyes kind of shifted, you know, you, you went to a place there when you're talking about, cause you went back to, to sitting by her bedside when she was a child. You just flash back to wherever those conversations were held. And I really, I really want to drive the point home to whoever's watching that this conversation is not a conversation about, you know, the, the little trivialities of life. Like this is real, this is, this is real shit. And there are a lot of real men who are going through this and they're sitting by their kid's bedside, having to answer the questions of, do you hate, you know, my mom, she's my mom. How can, do you hate her? Do you love her? Will these things happen? Not a lot of shows are talking about this. Not a lot of people are really going to answer those difficult questions, which is why we have to. We have to stop beating around the bush and acting like these things don't matter. We got to stop acting like, you know, we're, it's all sunshine and rainbows because there's a lot of men who haven't seen the sun in a long time and they haven't seen a fucking rainbow in years. And they're sitting there wondering why everybody's so fucking happy and they're going through this fucking bullshit and nobody gets it. Sometimes having men share a simple conversation like this is all those men need to hear to know I'm not alone and I can make it through this. They might not ask a question. They might not hit the fucking like button. They might not fucking ever let us know they exist. But hearing these men speak about this lets them know they're not alone. And that's why we do what we do. And that's why when I see fucking six dislikes, I get so fucking pissed off because we're talking about children and helping families. And there are some guys who are like, fuck the red man group. Uh, it's bigger than a fucking brand. This shit's going to save fucking lives. So when you start fucking hitting the buttons and hitting comments and shit, understand what you're doing. This is real shit that really fucking matters. And that's why we're a part of this group. And that's why we do what the fuck we do. Holy fuck. With that said, I did have a follow-up, uh, Phil. Do you <laughs> think, so getting remarried, having another woman and a positive woman, do you think that's had a, a better, I guess, uh, it's helped your daughter a little bit better because now she sees what right looks like. She sees what a, a healthy relationship looks like and a healthy woman. And, you know, I've met your wife, lovely woman. You know, has, do you think that's helped your daughter? You know, kind of like, all right, this is, this is how it's supposed to look. And now I understand why he had to leave that. Yeah. So it's interesting for the longest time, you know, my wife is a very feminine woman and it, it, and this may sound shallow, but when, you know, I started dating again, I, I specifically wanted a very feminine woman, a woman that would show my daughter how to grow up as a woman because her mother, her biological mother is actually frigging incapable of this. You know, you know, after the divorce that she really let herself go, you know, she's a, she's the kind of woman that you see now at the grocery store, no makeup, purple hair, uh, looks like shit, drives a piece of shit car, you know, just, just has a, a 100% negative attitude towards everything, literally. And then my wife is the complete opposite of that. You know, it's long hair, very feminine makeup, takes care of her body, takes care of her family first, 100%, you know, like, so in our home, you know, my wife is the first one up every morning and she goes in and wakes our daughter up and then she's in the kitchen. She gets my espresso going and brings me espresso in the bedroom before I even get out of bed. It's on, it's ready to go on a tray. And yes, I fucking drink milk in my fucking coffee. Oh, don't so, tell yeah. Ed. Don't tell Ed. <laughs> hey, I do. I, I make those coffee so creamy jokes, man. I do too. Yeah, fuck it, man. And yeah. and you know, she gets out here. She packs my lunch for the day's work and gets up, gets our daughter ready to go and to school. And then you know, I head to the gym and she takes she takes our child to school. And you know, so she's constantly in a presence. Well, for about six years of our marriage, it was a real struggle. And that is because the influence at her mother's house was, it doesn't matter what you look like. Who cares what people, who cares what people think? You don't have to dress nice. You don't need to fix your hair. You don't need to put on makeup. You don't need to act like a lady. And we, we struggled with that as a family for a long time. You know, the horseplay. I mean, I got a little girl and she's over here wanting to horseplay. And I'm like, no, we don't play that game. And now that she's grown up, her mom tries to play those games with her. And guess what? Mom, stop. I don't want that anymore. Stop. You know, and 
and and now she's she's into you know doing her hair and her makeup and 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 being feminine and doing the things that that feminine women like to do you know and it is it, it was it was a it was a struggle yes and um i just think that uh you know a person can get consumed with hate so much for another human being that it doesn't matter if they are damaging a small human being that you two created that hate and that anger they will do anything they can to make your life miserable you know and that's the thing is as our child has grown up i can see a clear shift from okay this is not such a good way to live to this is a better way to live and it's just taken some time because you know they're constantly getting that that influence that poison brown beating oh your dad this your stepmom that you know i mean it, it's i mean what do you do with it you have to just put your head down and like hunter drew told me one time you just gotta you gotta do it the best with what you got man you know and <laughs> solid advice that's you gave me that one time it was an it was an ugly time in my life and that's that's you know and you just gotta you gotta figure out a way to combat that toxic poisoning that your child is enduring and um, one way is to definitely find a woman of value and uh, have her help you raise your child it's interesting what you said there it's almost as if the hate for a happy ex is greater than the love of a child because you were happy and doing your thing her hate for you and what you were doing was more than the love she could give to your daughter that, that's that's some powerful shit, man that's wild it's for real and 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 i'm here to tell you i know i'm not the only guy that's going through it or who has been through that ringer and um you know and there was a time you know my folks you know i'd go to my folks and i'm like geez you know man she's my ex-wife's doing this this and this and you know my you know, my dad's been married. They're frigging their 50th anniversary is in February, for Christ's sake. I mean, my parents have been married 50 friggin' years in February. You understand how monumental that is? I mean, that's crazy. You know, and I'm, he, he looks at me and he's like, Psh. you know, some of his advice is never really lined up, unfortunately, because he's never been in this experience. You know, so when, you know, my ex-wife is behaving in a certain fashion and, and, and imprinting these fashions onto my child and I'm over here doing the other thing. And I'm trying to imprint a better way and, and, and take away that toxicness. You know, that's the one thing I will say. I never browbeat my ex-wife to my child. Never, never, no matter how hateful, no matter how crappy she was, I never once threw that bitch under the fucking bus's wheels. Now, when Veda, when she turns 18, she's going under the bus. <laughs> she's going under the bus, man. <laughs> <laughs> the drum is coming from downtown, man. All the We're hitting reverse. We're going back forward. <laughs> All right. So I threw out to the chat to ask you guys questions. We've got our first one. It's for the two of you. So since Phil just had the floor, Bobby, I'll have you go first. And then Phil, you can follow him up. And yeah. I'm going to talk that on the screen now. So from Anthony, besides advice from Hunter, Thanks, man. I'll just be quiet. <laughs> How do you stay positive and motivated to continue growing stronger? And I'm assuming this is for guys going through the divorce, going through sharing the kids and whatnot. How do you stay positive and continue to grow? In, in this situation. Uh, so I would say focus on what you're doing. Uh, part, of, part of the biggest problem or, or or the biggest hang up that can happen with one of these is you almost want to get sucked into the gossip about like what is she saying what is she doing you know because you want to know what's happening in your kid's life but there's a fine line between making sure they're okay and like keeping tabs if that makes sense and like i would just say don't worry about what that person is doing like focus totally on you and just making your mission and your life like the best. And if anything, let everybody that had ever said anything bad about you eat crow that way by you being successful and then just staying stuck where they're at. One of the funniest things about 
and I don't even like calling her my ex. I, I mean, I just, I, I don't even like giving her that, that title because it's like, I don't even feel like she deserves it. But one of the funniest things about her is that uh, she's 40 years old, I think, or somewhere, 41 or something, still lives at home with her parents, still isn't doing shit, you know, did, did tried this, tried that, tried uh, hanging on to some other guy's coattails and, you know, using, spreading her legs in order to make money and to, uh, and I don't mean like as a prostitute, but I, I mean, well, essentially it is a prostitute, but I mean like, you know, just like, oh, I'll go out with this guy or, oh, I'll go the, or this guy's got money or this guy's got money, you know, and like thinking like somehow that is going to, you know, get rid of this for them because, you know, crazy is just crazy. That That's all there is to it. And, and you know, some some guys may like the, the fun sex or, or whatever they think it is for a minute but any man of worth is not going to keep something like that around so the best thing to do uh, not to get too off track is just to do you uh, make sure that you're just making everything with you solid it's you, your kid sees it and can tell the difference like oh okay you know dad's the dependable one dad's the solid one you know and mom's uh they they know that and they see it it's just it's hard for them to admit to admit when they're little Cause you know, that's their mom, but as they get older, you know, and they, they, those years pass, it's like, they see it and they just, it just becomes more accustomed to it to where it just, it's just very matter of fact by the time they're adults, you know, to where it's just like, yeah, you know, that's the good guy. So just do you. So you can take the woman out of the marriage, but you can't take the crazy out of the woman. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, no, you know, that was hey, just Go ahead. real quick. Sorry, Phil, but because Phil was talking about this too, about how um, his, his, his current wife was a person that was adding value to his daughter's life. Um, but, but the mom was, was trying to poison that, you know, my son, my, my wife, uh, she's been, she's been a family friend of, of my family since I was a teenager. Like I've known her like for, for many, many years. And my son has known her for many, many years. They always had a cool relationship, you know, to where like she would, you know, do stuff with them and stuff. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, a little kid. And that was another thing that like, she just had to, had to crap on that. So it wasn't like he just lost the influence of his father, but he, he also lost the influence of another person that actually cared about what he was going through you know what i mean like like actually cared about like this child's wel welfare to where his mother was pawning him off on her mom every chance she could get so she could go out so it's just it's a bummer just be the good the way that you be the good guy is that you be the solid guy that's one the best of, thing to do one of the men in the chat said you know they'll know who's messed up and, you know, response to them was, look, then that's that's it. You know, kids, they'll see as long as you're consistent and you keep showing up, they'll see who's crazy. But like Phil was saying earlier, when you drop down to that level and you start going punch for punch or, you know, you go to the point where you can't keep yourself focused on your task and you lose yourself and your mission and your vision and your individuality, you lose all that to just being I'm a I'm a divorced man. You know, that's when the kids now they can't see because now you're both fucked up. Stay the course and let let the other one implode. And now to Phil. You know, how do you stay positive and motivated and continue to grow while you're going through something like this? I will say that uh, it wasn't easy. And there was a lot of times that uh, I wasn't positive and I was very weakened. And uh, that was one of, I think, out of all the events in my life, that divorce was actually one of the hardest things that I've ever had to to deal with. And I've, and I'm going to be honest with both of you gentlemen, I, everybody in the chat too, I've dealt with some pretty raw shit. And, um, so, you know, at, at one point I, I literally had to take some anxiety medication because like, I was like losing my shit over this, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, my family, you know, my, my, my folks, you know, they, they had my back 100%, you know, 
if it wasn't for my folks backing me up when I was, cause I had no one else, you know, it was, it was me and my child. And then my mom and dad, all the rest of our family is, you know, in other States, you know, we're transplants, you know, my, my old man was in the military, you know? So, um, it was very difficult. And he, how do you stay strong? You, you just don't show that in front of your children at all. 100%. You know, there was days where like I was so whacked out because of what the hell was going on and what the hell I was going through that, you know, I could barely put one foot in front of the other, but I'm here to tell you, we had breakfast in the morning. We fixed hair. We got dressed. And we went to school and I did it with a friggin' smile on my face. Do not. And I repeat all you men that are going through this or about to go through this. Do not elude one thing that you are suffering or, or, or you are in agony over something that, uh, that you're going through, especially with, with their mom, you know, in a, in a divorce situation. I never did that. You know, I, I never lost my cool as far as uh, in front of my child uh, to the point to where it was questionable. I mean, she'd seen some knockdown drag outs, you know, in the house, you know, over some stupid shit like whose turn it was to do the damn dishes. You know what I mean? But um, the uh, to stay strong, you just got to put one foot in front of the other and stay motivated there is, it's, it's kind of like driving through a tunnel, you know, you, you, you start at the tunnel and it's dark, you know, and you're pulling through this tunnel and it's dark. And then way off in the distance, I don't know if anybody's ever driven through a long ass tunnel, but in the, in the distance, you start seeing the light. And then that light gets a little brighter every day, every day, every day, every day, until eventually you're outside of that tunnel. And that's kind of like how that's that's the best analogy I can give to you for what it was like for me. It took time. It was a time thing for me to kind of go, OK, you know, I'm pissed inside. I could choke this person out for the way she's behaving and doing my child. And, and then react to that. And then I lose, you know, you know, do something stupid not an option uh continue to argue with her then what was the point of the divorce you know i mean my ex-wife has literally made it 100 percent difficult to deal with anything still to this day almost nine and a half years later <laughs> you know and and, it, and and the thing is is you know my attorney said one thing to me he goes you know phil it's your child if she doesn't pay you're still going to pay it right absolutely he goes, and who cares if she does the right thing or not? You keep doing the right thing and it's going to work out one day. And, you know, we're, we're getting to that point now. And, um, you know, so there is an end to it. And to stay motivated, there's going to be times where you aren't motivated. There was times where literally I would take my child to school and I would have guys on jobs and I would literally go home and crawl back in my bed and go and just want to sleep because I was that depressed and just like, what the hell have I done to my life after all the other shenanigans I've done to myself? You know what I'm saying? So uh, basically uh, you just have to put one foot in front of the other. And, it, you know, as a man, you know, it's okay to hurt, but it's not okay to share that hurt with your children because they're looking for you for strength. You know, and that's that's the big thing right there is, you know, the kids, kids need to see you. Is like Conan, you know, you need to be the family fucking Conan basically every day, no matter how weak your armor is, no matter how long the battle is, you need to. Be there, you need to be 100 percent present and strong. And you take that motivation and I got mine from, you know, we'd go, I'd pick her up from school. We'd go to the park and just kick the soccer ball and start appreciating those moments with her. And I'm like, yeah, man, I, this is okay. We're going to be okay. We're going to survive this, you know, and, 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 and family support, you know, my folks, once again, I can't express enough. If you're going through something like this, how important your family is because, you know, blood's thicker than water. 
you know, it's one thing, you know, yeah, you were married to the lady uh, and, and, and they can't relate to those experiences. But in the end, your folks want to see you succeed. They want to see you survive whatever turmoil you're going through and they want to see you come out the other end stronger. So rely heavily on that. When there's times that you can't, you rely on your folks. You rely on that on your inner core, you know, you, that, that core group of people that are there to prop you up. And that's how you get, that's how you get through it. And, and through getting through it, you're going to start feeling that motivation of, yeah, you know, this is getting easier every day. This is getting better. Things are, the things are improving. And, and you start not so much looking at the crap and the rubble and you start looking at the sunshine. And of course the rainbows like Hunter was talking about. <laughs> Why do I have to be talking about the rainbows, man? <laughs> no, it's serious. And you know, there's a lot of guys that are listening to this, and I, I, I guarantee they can attest to the same. Of they had a support network, you know. And this goes to you know, for some men, they don't have their parents, you know. So, so you're talking about your inner network. This is why now you start forging relationships with other men. You start finding the groups that you can relate to. You start finding those. Maybe you're so embarrassed in your inner you know, like your friends and your family to talk about your marital strife. You don't want to be the guy who's like, you know, your family's not all put together because you'll be judged or whatever, you know? So there are so many groups, you know, if you're on YouTube right now watching us, then you're aware of the sphere. You're aware of the many groups that have taken off, you know, and I'm not even here to shill the fraternity of excellence. You know, it's fucking hands down the greatest group of them all, but there are other groups out there. You know, there's anything from the guys on Reddit, you know, the guys are on Twitter, there are men everywhere that just want to link up and have their pocket. And guess what? When shit hits the fan for you, you reach out to those guys. You don't break down in front of the kid. You don't break down in front of the ex. You hold that shit together. But maybe when, when the kid's in bed and you're home alone and the fucking tears are starting to well up, you go on not, online and you're like, hey, guys, it's been a hard fucking day. Like, I feel like I have fucking failed as a fucking man. I failed my family. I failed my friends. I failed, you know, all the goals I had, I failed. And those men will be like, hey, man, but you're still here. You're still breathing. You still have an opportunity to course correct. You just got to adjust the coordinates. You know, you were on a ship. You thought it was going that way. All this is a minor adjustment. You know, look at the stars, set a new course. Now you're going to that island instead of this one. You're still going to a fucking island. It's still going to be fucking awesome. It's just going to look a little different, but you're good. So make sure you're doing that now. Don't wait until shit hits the fan to actually reach out to somebody. You've got these two men on here. You've got myself. Reach out now. I'm like, hey, I, I connected with this or, you know, I was facing that. Don't hold that shit in. Phil had his parents he went to. Look, I can rely on that. When shit hit the fan in my life, I went to Reddit and I spoke to the men and electronically, men I'd never met at that point. You know, it doesn't matter where you're at when you're going through it. Have that group that you can fall back on, you know, because there's there's no real safety net in society for men. They don't give a fuck if you small, if you fall and shatter into pieces. They don't. But other men do because other men get that because that's what men do. We fucking get it. So again, find your group. You know, do your thing before shit hits the fan. Start forging those networks. And if you're going through it in the, right now and you think you're alone, listen to the stories being told. All right? Pay attention. And again, for the chat, if you're going through shit and you want the men to talk about it, we've got roughly 30, 45 minutes left. So get that questions out there. And the next thing I wanted to talk about besides support networks, for men that are going through this, and maybe you can tell your, your personal, you know, story, but... Are you up front, you know, when you're like, all right, in a few months, you know, this thing's ending. We're getting divorced. It's happening with your kid. Or were you private about it? You know, you went through the whole proceedings. And then on the last day when you're like, all right, we're splitting up. So the kids obviously needs to know. Or did you wait to the last moment to tell them like, hey, your mother and I, it's not working out. We're getting a divorce. And Phil, you went last. So Bobby, he can go. Uh, I... My son at the time was was a real, real young. I, I don't even think he was two. He wasn't even two yet. So there was no conversation like that. Um, and, and even if he was older, I, I, I don't see the point of doing that to to a kid at all. To be honest with you, uh, I don't. I, I don't see why to put them through the turmoil of some situation that's like being extended and drawn out now every day for them wakes up just like shit you you know i i, I mean you're just putting them through something to where I, I would instead of like peeling the band-aid off slowly i would just 
be at the point to where it's like, okay, you're like, you're about to go and you're like, Hey, come here, kiddo. And just rip like, that fucker off. Daddy's, <laughs> yeah. Daddy's got to go stay here now. And this, Hey, it sucks, man. It, it does suck. When Phil was talking about being uh, depressed and having bad feelings, I had those feelings for my son really bad. Uh, mainly because I didn't have a dad growing up and now I felt like I was ruining some other kid, some other boy's life, you know? Uh, so I, I can understand that he had his parents uh, as a support system. I didn't have a, a support system like that and, and eventually ended up in prison a couple of years later. Uh, but for, you don't, just because your life is sucking, you don't want theirs to suck. You know, that's like what she's thinking. That's like her mentality is like, I'm going to make it fucking shit for everybody. Poop rolls downhill. You know, that's like that type of thing. You don't need to do that. I would just try and keep the child out of it for just as long as humanly possible. And, and then make whatever play you have to make. What about you, Phil? Tell them uh, immediately or wait until the last second to pull that bandit off. Well, basically, you know, like I said, it'd been nuclear for so long over so many stupid little issues in front of our child, you know, to the point to where it was like, huh, she obviously wants to argue. I'm going to go do something else. The, uh, you know, when it came time for it and, and, and once again, I moved that person out of the house, you know, it was the first night I'll never forget it. You know, I, I told my ex-wife, I said, okay, look, you know, she's not, she's not going to that apartment. You know, she's going to stay right here at this house. This is her home. This is her bedroom. This is what she knows. She's going to school tomorrow. We're going to keep on this. We're going to keep her on that track. And that's that you get out, you come back at eight o'clock when it's time for me to tuck her in bed. And uh, we'll tell her together that you're not going to be here tonight. And I'll never forget that conversation as long as I live <laughs> because, uh, you know, my child was like, Whoa, when I said, you know, Hey, excuse me. I said, uh, Hey, I need to talk to you. And here's your mom. And she came in the room and I told her, I said, okay, so here's the deal. You and I are going to stay here tonight and your mom, she's, she's going to go live somewhere else. And this is the first night of many nights that is going to be that way. And the look on her little face was like, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't conceptualize it because even though it was so poisonous between the two of us, she could not figure out why her mom was not going to be there. And I said, so you grab a book, we're going to hang out here. And I, and, and, and uh, she grabbed her book and I, I looked at my ex-wife and I said, now you go ahead and tell her good night. I'll leave the room. I left the room and let her tell her good night. Whatever she said to her, I don't know. And then I went back in there and um, uh, we read a book and, and then I, I just stayed with her until she fell asleep. But she, she asked, well, where's my mom going? She asked me that about 30 times. And I said, well, she's really close and you're going to see, you're going to see really soon. I'm going to take you there. I promise. She goes, okay. And I said, well, we're going to go to school tomorrow and it's going to be okay. And so you got to remember, this is a four and a half year old child, you know? So that was a week after father's day, you know? And um, I'll never forget that as long as I live. The hurt in that child's face was just it, kill, it messes with me to this day. I'm not trying to like be all emotional or anything in front of you gents, but the moral of the oh, story man. is, is that it, it, the, I'll never forget the look on that child's face ever, ever. Like I've seen some harsh shit, but that's like one of the harshest things I've ever seen and had to deal with. And I think that is that, that moment in time in my life really sent me down a, a spiral of being really upset because you're right. Bobby's right. Well, what am I fucking this kid up? Am I, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? But at, at the same time, it just can't continue to be just pit vipers and scorpions all the time. It's, you know, it's gotta be chill. You know, this kid's got to develop yeah. into a human fucking being here. 
So I, I kept it, we kept it private until the, the night she was gone. And, you know, when she was here moving her stuff, actually me and my employees moved her. <laughs> so while she was at school, while they, while the child was at school, we moved everything she selected from the home. And, um, you know, then we, I went and picked her up from school and we went to the park. So it was like, we did not come home till dark and then had dinner. And then I put her in the, in the shower and then it was like, boom, you know, then her mom came over and it, that's, that's how that, so I was, I'm more of a keep it private until I think, you know, no matter, no matter the situation, whether you rip the fucking bandaid off or you keep it private, it's, it's, it's wretched. It's a wretched thing to even watch. Yeah. Or be a part of. I remember my boy telling me from that young age, I want to come live with you. And that was the thing that used to kill me. Because, like, I would think, like, for a kid to, like, want to go away from his mom, like, how bad does it have to be, you know? And this isn't, like, a kid that's rationalizing. Uh, I mean, he's, he was two, three, four years old at the time. It was just that that desire, you know, like you wanted to to be with me. And and the the thing that that really bothers me, and this is what you'll happen, you'll see with with some of these party girls or 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 these women that now that they're divorced, they're all of a sudden they're like the the shit that needs to go out and you know go out four or five nights a week. But it was like that kid never knew whether he was coming or going. Like I'd take him as much as I could get him, but it was like, do you want to babysit him? Do you want to babysit? You know, or, and, and if it wasn't me, it was her, her mom or her cousin or whoever. But it was like he never had the thing of knowing where he was going to be at from a young age. And that's something that always tore me up because as Phil just pointed out, they have to develop and and how like you put a plant in the ground right if you were to keep just pulling that seedling up every few it just die it wouldn't grow and that's like the, the same type of thing that you're doing with these kids and it's it's awful and it's a real awful thing to to have to go through it really is not only for you but i mean more importantly for them it's 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 all there's no win in anything one of the ways i i can tell if the conversation is you know it's needing to be had is kind of how i feel when i'm going through with my guests and just just listening to this you know that the the raw just reality of what's going on especially with the kids which are which are innocent beings you know it's like they're they're kids you know it's like you look at a puppy you look at a kitten you look at a child like they're just the most innocent pure thing in the fucking world you know, and to cause them harm or any even psychological strife is, it's just fucking wrong. Like there's something wrong about that. But there's so many men who hear you guys talking about this, which fucking sucks. Like I broke my fucking pencil trying to fucking just listen to you guys. And, but they need to, they need to hear that too, because they, they face that shit. They're like, fuck, we've had a few gentlemen inside the chat already share, you know, that's exactly what they've gone through. Their son saying, hey, I want to come home with you. They're, they're sitting down with their daughter. Why can't we be a family like what the fuck? Like those are really fucked up questions, and the kids don't know what's going on, or they're confused. And to them, it's mom and dad to the end. Yet here I am, fucking like what the fuck? But that's that's why we need to talk about it, even though it fucking sucks. Now those guys, all right, they can talk about it. When you when you when you speak it, when it when it becomes a thing outside of your body, it's not just this fucking pressure and rage inside you. It's like all right, okay, these guys. Let me talk to those guys. All right, cool. I can say the thing. It gets out of my system. I can, I can speak. My heart isn't heavy. My soul can fly. I can fucking breathe again. You know, I don't fucking hate the world. Food doesn't turn to ash in my mouth anymore. You know, but for a while, that's all you have. It's just darkness and fucking pain and sadness. And I mean, if, if there's anything to come from this show at all, you know, it's that you can make it through that as long as you keep fucking going forward. Because it, I mean, you two gentlemen have shared very fucking rough stories, but you kept going forward, which is kind of a theme between the two of you is you, you just kept going. You didn't quit. Even when you're like, fuck it, I'm going to quit. And you're going to lay down and think about quitting. You didn't quit. You know, and that's the worst case to me is that the dad gets so despondent and so like lost in that abyss that he's like, there is no positive to this. And that's when you hear the stories about the man who fucking goes up and he shoots this, the, the, the mom who won't give him custody. And then he blows his fucking brains out. And now that kid goes to having no parents and has nothing and has no father and has no mother. 
It has no guidance whatsoever because the father lost his fucking mind because the system was against him. The woman was against him. His child was weaponized against him. And all he wanted to do was hug his fucking daughter, hug his son, hug his, his son and daughter, whatever the fucking case is. All he wanted to do was be there with his children and it was kept from him. And it, I can't, I don't know what I would do. I've never gone through this. And that's why I really wanted you gentlemen on here because you, you can give real world examples and experience, but I don't know what the fuck I would do. I uh, just, just, I tried playing like the what if game while the two of you were speaking. I'd, I'd fucking go ballistic. I would lose my fucking shit. And I fully understand the guys who fucking go like postal. I get it. What you're talking about going postal, which is, I mean, those, those, those actual incidences are few and far between, but let's talk about something that's much more detrimental to society and way more common. Okay. And that's the dad that doesn't have any type of moral system like Phil or I does and goes, fuck it. I'm out. I don't want to deal with this bitch. And now that kid, because of whatever, you know, relationship and because this dude being an asshole, now that kid's fatherless, whether it's a, a girl or, or a boy. And that happens all the time where dudes just walk. I don't want nothing to do with this kid because of, I mean, it's because of, of what they're lacking inside ultimately, but they blame it on, you know, all oh, this, this broad to do, 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 do and walk. And that's the real tragedy because then you got these, these unguided people growing up. And I can speak this from my own experience and, and from what I saw over the course of a decade, uh, who just go out and wreak holy hell on society. They're just time bombs and someone's going to get messed up. And that's the real bummer because it starts very young. Now that, that leads very well into the next topic, which was custody issues. You know, we've had a few guys say, I've got 50, 50. It's still hard. A few guys, they, they have just a weekend, you know, it's kind of like national guard one weekend a month, two weeks a year. Like that's the custody of, of their kids. And it's, it's fucking terrible. But for some, for whatever reasons, that's the position they found themselves in. Maybe they made some mistakes, maybe whatever, the courts, whatever. Advice to give those men. You know, and there's, there's one of, and there's an FOE brother that's in the chat right now, specifically, specifically thinking of who has shared custody. And Phil, I think we've talk, spoken with him about, you know, doing the, the best you can with the time that you have. But I mean, for those guys who only have a weekend a month, you know, or maybe they travel for their job. So they've got, they're always gone during their other week. So that's why the wife got full, you know, 90% custody or whatever, you know, what advice do you have to those men? <clears throat> well, in, in my current situation right now, uh, I've got what's called in the state of Texas joint conservatorship and we share 50, 50 custody and, uh, in the divorce, uh, finalizations and process and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I put our child through private school. She carries the insurance. Okay. And uh, I, I elect private school because I have zero faith in public schools. Let's just face it. And um, so she's supposed to carry the insurance. You know, we split all the medical bills 50 50. You know, the child's at your house over at your apartment. Okay. You need to be responsible for school lunches, school uniforms. You know, basic necessities when she's at my house, I need to do the same thing. Okay, well, what happens when that child grows up a little bit? Let's talk about that. So we're talking like youth sports. Oh, you're gonna pay half of that? No. What about school lunches? This lady has a balance because I run a spreadsheet. She's got like a thirteen hundred dollar balance for school lunches with me right now. Jesus. And refuses to pay him. <laughs> it's a lot team of pizza sports. Fridays, man. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you something else. Team sports, uniforms, soccer cleats, soccer balls, private coaches, uh, physical, uh, physical, uh, she goes, she, my daughter muscle uh, trains, you know, with a, with a trainer to build muscle, you know, private soccer coach, volleyball coaches, volleyball tournaments, soccer tournaments. That lady has kicked down less than 1% since our divorce for all of that. 
school uniforms. This year, she stalled all the way out. She has completely popped a clutch. And she's at, my child's actually wearing uniforms that I've purchased. So I said, I told my wife, I said, look, you need five skirts, five shirts, two athletic uniforms, make sure we have everything we need. She can take them to her mom's, bring them back and we can wash them. And, and you know, my wife's like, you know, that's, that's some crap. She needs to throw down and do her part too. And I'm like, she's not going to insurance. She's job hopped the entire time we've been divorced. She's had nine jobs. Almost she's averaged about a job a year since our divorce. And there's been serious lapses in it, in insurance. Okay. And to the point to where it's like several times, like four times, as a matter of fact, the child hasn't even had insurance. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's had to go and, and buy some little group PPO until she got a new job. And, you know, here's the deal. Just because the paper says you have 50, 50 custody, just because the paper says you have to do something doesn't make the other person do it. They're either going to do the right thing or the wrong thing when it comes to the kid, you know, and, and I'm fortunate, you know, I don't pay child support. I don't pay alimony. I don't pay any of that crap. I told my lawyer, I will, I will dig, I will sell, I will sell everything down to the last hammer yeah. to not pay child support. My dad had to float me money to make sure I didn't pay child support. I'm dead serious. I'll say it right here. My dad financially backed my divorce and it wasn't even his fucking divorce. You know, and um, guys that only see their kids one one weekend a month, what can you do? Man, as much as you can in that short period of time, you, you do everything you can and you do everything 100% right because the other 27 days you can be a fuck up. But those three days right there, that weekend, you better be doing the right thing and being 100% all over everything. As far as not seeing them for the other 27 days or the, during the week, bullshit. You got school activities, school functions, sports. Get those kids signed up. That's one thing I did. I, I, I snowed my ex-wife in with 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 you sports. Okay. You're gonna be a jerk. Well, I hope you're not busy for the next three weekends because we got tournaments and they're out of town. Enjoy the drive. She's with you. You know, you just gotta learn to find the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and that's that's what you gotta do. And that's it. Bob, you have anything you want to add to that? You know, I I can't even remember exactly what the original question was. Uh, Excellent. But, Excellent. <laughs> That's how good of a job Phil did. I forgot what the fuck I asked too. Yeah. I was hoping you'd pick yeah. it up if I threw it your way. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just, I had to, you know, <laughs> just shield myself from that one real quick. No, um, in, in, in California, they they lean very heavily in the woman's favor uh, so much so that it's it's just it's it's a farce on what men's rights are during a divorce uh, even even after a, a divorce like when you're in family court uh, and you're having to do different because when when my divorce went through uh, my ex-wife filed that while i was in prison uh, even though we had been broken up a long time, it's like she waited until I was gone, you know, to, to do it. Um, and so being that I'm sitting in a prison, I can't have physical custody of my son <laughs> and I, and I can't have shared custody because I, what am I going to do? I can't do anything. That's the way the state looks at it. So she got sole everything. And when I came home, uh, there was some other court stuff to where I had to do my own from, from, and I'd learned this by doing it for other people while I was inside, but I was doing my, my own, uh, paralegal work, uh, my own court, like getting, going to the courthouse, getting the blank forms. Hey, can I, I need this, 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 and this, and like filling it out myself. Well, meanwhile, when I'm going to court, she's got two special counsel appointed to her. 
So like I'd literally go in and sit on one side of the table by my lonesome and it was her with two lawyers given to her by the state because she didn't have any money. But I mean, she she had it. And and the funny thing was, I still ended up winning anyway, because I, I just had a good, solid case for it, you know, but but it's um, it's things are stacked towards men as it is, uh, especially if if we're going to use what we're going for uh, or what we're going by with society today and kind of uh, how we see the political beliefs are and how everything should basically be given to a single mother anyway. The, the dads kind of automatically look at as the villain in the picture by a lot of people. So you're already got the stigma that you have to kind of battle anyway. Um, the, the best way to keep it going to where you're still going to be the guy that's looking good and the guy that's that's um, that comes out looking better is by spending that quality time with your kid that your kid is obviously missing from the other half. Uh, they get that and, and they see what you're doing versus where they're having to go to. Uh, it, when you can make that, that, that contrast between night and day, there, there's no question on, on who the child is looking at uh, as their protector and and the one who's guiding them now do you think there's a difference between dealing with a son and dealing with a daughter whether it's 50 50 weekend a month you know whatever the schedule is do you think dealing with a boy in divorce and dealing with a a girl in divorce is a different approach and different tact are you asking me yes are you, are you, okay. we'll let you take this one and maybe um, phil forget the question okay, he can okay. go next <laughs> no i i uh now Thank God I, I I don't have to do this divorce thing with my daughter. Uh, we've got a really strong little threesome family unit here that where we've we've traversed the state. We've we've made the impossible happen, and and I love this group. Um, I will say this in general: uh, boys are are a little bit more rambunctious, so you can kind of point a boy in a direction they're almost kind of like puppies right to where you can point them in a direction and just kind of let them go right and they'll and they'll just go with whatever you're you're giving that push behind them to where girls ask a lot of questions and like girls are like it's like a way more psychological warfare type thing uh from what i've noticed with my daughter it's you can't do that with them you can't uh they don't have that same kind of young adventurous boy they, they want to know why on everything and and reasoning and, and and so in that sense i could only i can only sympathize with my bro man because i i like going through that with with sophie yeah there would be a lot of uh a lot of questions for sure phil how was it going through with a girl was it was it uh, how Bobby said, kind of like a cat that is inquisitive as opposed to a dog who just runs straight? Absolutely. Here's the deal. My wife just pulled in the, the garage so my dogs might bark, so I might have to mute my mic for a second, okay? They fucking go Dogs, baby. I get it. That's why I have a shed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the uh, – yeah, she, she definitely – yeah, they want to know the details. Exactly. And, uh, you know – even though as men and we're mature, as mature men, we we operate on logic. Young girls, especially, you know, preteen, they are very, very inquisitive and want to know every little reason, every little thing. Why, 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 why? Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. And um, you can't never get tired of answering the whys. You just have to be creative in your answers. That way you don't further damage the situation. And I can't believe these dogs didn't bark these lazy mutts. I heard the door. You have a terrible I, alarm system, man. 
<laughs> they didn't nice. get up, did they? Still sleeping? Uh, it's, it's, it's 100 It's hundred degrees here, man. So these <laughs> things are like, oh, I'm off duty. That's how it is out here right now, too, man. Just dying. That's why I'm sitting here wiping the sweat off my forehead. <laughs> so I turned the AC off because I didn't want any background noise. And this shed, man, it's like I insulated the fuck out of it. So I'm just like, oh, my God. Perfect. <laughs> like, trying to be cool right now. Like I feel the sweat running down my spine. The things we do for yeah. our people and <laughs> for the people tuning yeah. in. All right, yeah, we, we got so all that. I've got one more topic to talk to you guys about, but I kind of want it to be the finisher because it, it's solid and it's going to let the men who are watching this leave here with like a little bit of fire in their soul. So before we get to that, though, I asked if they had questions. We did get one to the question here. Curious how, as a father of two girls, how do you raise them? I'm not a woman and they can't trust their mother to teach them what they should know. Now, Phil, you kind of answered this with your lady, your new wife, you know, who came in and you vetted her properly to be feminine to, to display those qualities. And Bobby, you've got a you've got the the new thing going where even with your daughter, you know, you've got a solid example for her to follow. But what about the fathers who have daughters that don't have wives or girlfriends? Advice. Okay. Do you want how me to go you, first? Sure. How would you approach it if you didn't have your lady? If I didn't have my lady, you know, I would still let me think about that for a second. That's good. That's a good one, man. Um, you know, I, obviously I'd have painted toenails <laughs> and, uh, you know, it would be, You'd be you know, living in California. There you go. I mean, I gotta, do, I gotta do what I gotta do. You know what I mean? So to, to, get, to get her to follow that feminine role, you know, I would immerse her in, in situations, you know, like our daughter, she goes to camp for, four 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 straight weeks over the summer it's an all girls camp so it, 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 on the cool it's almost like finishing school they learn they they, they teach them etiquette you know it, you know it, and it's all girls and so i would immerse her your children especially little girls in situations where they can be surrounded by other girls okay and and, and i'm talking about the right kind of girls you know, and definitely be picky and choosy uh, with the the parents that you associate with and their children. You know, if you if you see your child has a friend and mom is you know wearing sweatpants around the house and a baseball cap and no makeup and doesn't take care of herself, and that's probably not a female a feminine imp, uh, influence you want on your child. You know, so. You know, there's a multitude of things you can do as far as, you know, gymnastics, dance, cheer, all that. Those are all very feminine sports that you can immerse your female children in. And believe it or not, that's a good place to pick up women, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. Well, you know that's I mean? how you get the girlfriend. Who's uh, that's I'm, to, I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you, you know, and then it's like, boom, you're hanging out with the ladies. I know you're a man or whatever. And oh, this sucks. I'm having to watch my child tumble but you can actually have a good time. And then those are, those are good feminine influences as well. You know, I think they're just, flexible too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and so that would be, that would be one route other than camp, you know, camp is an, an important part of her life. You know, she, she's actually intends on in summertime when she's a little bit older, going down and being a counselor in between high school and college. And I'm all for it. And, um, so it's just trying to find those feminine influences because it, it's tough when you're a man, you know, you know, with, there's a single dad at my child's school right now and her friend, she's really close with her, um, his daughter, you know, and, and I met him at the volleyball game the other night and he's like, Hey, I'm so-and-so and, you know, I'm a single dad and my children live with me and I'm, well, that's great. And, and, but I, I, we, my wife and I have come to the determination that we think that his child his daughters had a hard time making friends because, you know, oh, you're a single dad. It makes it tough to have friends over for sleepovers and stuff like that when there's not a female presence in the house. It just makes it it just makes it harder. You know what I mean? And people can be judgy, judgy, even at private school, you know, but um, I can sense that they've been through the ringer a little bit as far as making friends. And, you know, so you got to figure out ways to combat that. So if you don't have any kind of female friends that can host, you know, you, you need to get some. 
and you need to do you need to do girls nights that way you know and have these female friends say hey you know i mean i'm a single dad i got two daughters and you know you got your shit together and i know we're friends but i really need some good influence and i guarantee you these ladies would be more than willing to give you a hand because women love hanging out with little girls i don't give a shit who they are you just need to make sure they're the right ones i think that's a good uh a good vetting in itself is if the woman likes to hang out with you know young girls and they do their hair and hang out and you know be girly with them like that that is a good sign if you find a woman who's like i don't like little girls <laughs> fuck get away from me then who the fuck are you <laughs> something's wrong with you yeah, where the fuck planet did you land from? You know, <laughs> it's like dogs. Like, who doesn't like dogs? Who doesn't like cats? What's wrong with yeah. you? <laughs> Bobby, do you have anything you want to add to that? Fathers raising girls without a feminine presence. When I did my my speech at at the twenty one con patriarch, it a was, killer fucking it was speech, a, might I say? Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but when when I when I did that, there was a there was a. There was a part in there where I spoke about uh, these these boys that didn't have fathers and and how we can combat this epidemic that turns into these young juvenile uh, these men that never made it out of their 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 juvenile years and are just acting reckless out in society and one of the things i suggested is is that if, if you're a person like let's say your sister or your cousin or somebody does have a have a son and it's someone to where you could safely access that kid like the gatekeeper to that kid isn't some crazy broad spend some time with that kid you never know what that little ripple that you're throwing in that pond like what it can be years later flip side with that same thing with a girl if you've got you know uh, a sister or a cousin or somebody that's like worth their salt or set or uh, you know a family member or a good friend who who you feel is like someone that that could be a good influence then maybe reach out and and be straight up with them just be like hey you know since this has happened i i just don't really feel like she's getting that good influence that she could be getting and I see you as, as someone that could be a positive influence in her life. And maybe, maybe if I, if I threw you some money, you could take her on like a girl's night out once a week or a couple times a week or something, you know, offer to pay for their dates or whatever. I mean, just something, right? Because that's, that's a big deal, even more so for, for, for these women, because, uh, they can, because of those hormones that are happening with them anyway, um, it's like they can so easily just go crazy if if they aren't guided in the right direction. And you want to have that good influence because we see, especially in my home state, what this, what the over liberated, I can do anything I want and there's no consequences for crap type girl looks like and acts like you can see that from here and and that's not the answer uh the answer is is getting that kid with somebody that's gonna impart some proper wisdom and morals that, that's fucking awesome man i think you fucking just slammed the fucking nail on the head so when we talk about you know the responsibility and the burden of the performance and all these things it doesn't end because your child does not have a penis because you're a man and you have a daughter does not excuse you from her upbringing. It's not like the mom is supposed to take care of that. Mom's out of the picture. Oh, well, sorry for you. You know, you're on your own now. That's not how that works. Taking that burden performance, throwing it in your back and going forward and be like, hey, first off, you should be confident speaking with women. So, hey, attractive woman, you're attractive. You're very feminine. That's great. You've got these great qualities. I'd love for my daughter to have. You know, we've known each other for this long. You know my daughter. You know me. I was wondering X, Y, Z. What do you think about this? That, that was perfect, man. And going out there and being that active role model and and that bridge for your daughter you build the bridge and the daughter can walk across it to meet that person to go on those dates but she never gets to meet them and this kind of goes to phil's point where people are judgy you know people do kind of put up that wall you've got to knock that down so your daughter can walk through it's not about you and you might not even get the date it might not be about you hooking up with the mom as much as you helping connect with the mom you know and the daughter can come in and meet maybe that woman's daughter their friends cool go hang out do hair, makeup, talk, do, what do the fuck girls do? You know, go do that, have a good time. And when you come home, dad will be here. And you know what? I'd love to hear about your night. 
And you know what? You got to hang out with the girls and you come home and cool. She gets to have kind of her rite of passage to womanhood. And you're sitting there, you know, just ready to build another fucking bridge where you need to do or where you need to for your child. You know, that's I think that was, the combination of those answers is fucking perfect. And again, that's why I wanted to have this conversation, because there's a lot of men probably who are going to these things and they've never even thought, oh, man, it would not be weird of me to ask if my daughter could hang out with them. You know, and let's say the girl's practicing and you just walk to the side. Hey, this is whatever. What do you think about? And then you all of a sudden your daughter has a friend. Your daughter has a mentor. Your daughter has a whole world where she can express that feminine beauty without dad sitting over there like fucking stroking his beard. Like, I don't fucking know. Like, I don't know how to do a bow or French pra- braid or whatever the fuck. You know? That was excellent. Also, shout out to Jimmy G, who was fucking dropping goddamn solid questions. He gave a huge super chat. Guy's fucking killing it. And he's fucking gotten jacked in the past few fucking months. I saw him the other day. He was at the FOE meetup. And the dude walks in, fucking shoulders back, arms blowing out. I'm like, what the fuck have you been on? So just between okay. patriarchs and FOE, the fucking dude's been killing it. So he's one of the dudes. Right on, who Jimmy. Dude, he's, he's killing it. So yeah, he's one of the guys. You know what I'm on, Jimmy? He's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last thing. So, guys, if you've got questions, throw them out. You're running out of time. The last thing I want to present to the two of you, and this is kind of to help leave these guys with a kind of a game plan going forward is preventative measures. So a lot of this has been corrective. We've had a lot of conversations with uh, about men who've already gone through and are dealing with it and how to improve. I want to talk about preventative. These are the men who maybe they're in a rough relationship right now. And they're like, look, I might get divorced. I don't know. But what can they do now to maintain the relationship with their child so it ends up flourishing and being you know, maintained even though the relationship with the woman has been broken? So preventative measures for the men who thinking they might get divorced men who are in the process right now they're like look i don't don't know what the fuck to do i'm frustrated i'm angry you know what can they do and phil you told an awesome story that we're not going to go into specifics but i mean i i my heart is fucking smiling for you so ways to maintain a positive relationship with your child even when dealing with you know the hell of divorce and phil let you go first on this one right on the uh the biggest thing i can tell you right now is you know, your accessibility to them. You need to be there with a smile on your face and you need to have a soft voice and you need to be able to, you know, correct them when they, when they're messing up, you know, and, and, and work with them depending on the age, you know, my daughter, she's going to be 15. So it's now it's, I don't, I don't break her chops anymore. We sit down as a family and have discussions about the choices she's making. And, 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 and it's, it's hard because I'm like, Hey, you know, you're not in trouble. We just need to talk about this and get it worked out. You're going to make many mistakes. And when you make the big ones, I'm the guy you need to come to. And that starts with an early age. You know, the preventative things you can do when you're starting to, if you're thinking about going through a divorce and you have children, um, I would say spend as much time as you can with your children before you actually pull the trigger. Number two, be the first one to file. I don't care. Mm-hmm. If you li- I don't care if you live in California. If you're the first one to file and you tell your lawyer, hey, temporary custody, file. D- filing first. That's what I want. Um, no expense. I don't care. Borrow money. Be the first to file. That way you have first possession of the custody until the first court hearing. So you got two weeks to three weeks of keeping your children from getting completely frigging brainwashed and, and, and parental alienation hitting you square in the face. Oh, well, your dad, this, your dad, that, you know, be the first to file. That's a preventative measure right there in itself. That way you have possession of them for the first two to three weeks. And uh, just until the first hearing, you know, and then they're going to set some sort of visitation up. The uh, another preventative measure you can do is, um, I don't care how tired you are or how busy your job is, you get there. Someone else has been picking your kids up from school because you're at work. You need to talk to your boss. Hey, man, I'm, I'm about to throw a grenade in my marriage. It's on the rocks. I really need some concession here. You need to let the people that you work around know that you're going to be absent because you're going to be busy being a dad. That's the that's a big one right there because you just go, oh, one day, you know, 
Jim Bob's not here. The next day, Jim Bob had to leave early and you don't give these people ample warning. They're going to can your ass. See, I, I was lucky enough to be able to work for myself. So I didn't have to really worry about that. You know, I flexed my time the way I wanted it, you know, and um, so I would definitely do that. Um, vetting your attorney, you know, vet your attorney. If he looks like he's going to be weak in any Here's the deal. You're going in to kill at this point in time. It's like shark week. Okay. There is blood in the friggin' water. I don't want to see anything left, but some fucking fur from that seal, <laughs> nothing else. And you need to commit to go into that, to that, that distance. So vet your attorney, find someone that's strong. If they look like they're going to be a weak weakling about it, they're not your guy. Don't hire a woman. Hire a man. Um, but you, you, you have to, you need to come to the determination that, that, that you are going to have open war in your life for anywhere from one to three to five years. Depends on how cantankerous your ex, your ex is going to be and how much money she has and how much money you have, because it becomes a money game in the end. And speaking of money, we all are familiar with Bitcoin. We're all familiar with how to move money around. Start hopping that money out of the savings account. You can't really touch the 401k without causing too many ripples. But extra cash, start stacking it. If you look like you're going to friggin' throw a grenade in your living room in six months, start stacking the money. Bit, you know, moving it around, moving it around. Get on Twitter if you don't know how to move money around through Bitcoin. <laughs> Trust me. You know, the uh, you know there's there's a bazillion things I can tell you to do, um, but one yeah. thing is is don't fucking settle, man. Don't when you when you actually do this, don't settle. You know, so when it comes to your kids, it's all and everything. That's it. There's no other option. Yeah. You know, like Bobby was saying, oh, some guys just say fuck it. If you're that kind of man, you aren't even on this podcast right now watching it. Cause you don't care. Everybody that's watching this right now cares. So, you know, start, start getting ready, getting ready, preparing. <laughs> this is a fucking pre-brief for somebody getting fucking going through the ringer. This is the pre-brief. This is what I'm, you listen to. I'm dead serious, man. Because you think that that lady, when you file for divorce is just going to say, Oh, Oh, you served me with some papers. Hell no. My ex-wife had some process server at my door. My, and he, this guy, I dodged this guy for like a week and a half. All right. And uh, finally he caught me. <laughs> he caught me. I moved my truck all over the neighborhood. This guy was coming to my house at like one in the morning, beating on the door. Like he, he beat the door so bad that he warped it. Right. And, uh, my lawyer's like, don't answer it. Just keep, because every time he has to come out, it costs her money. She spent like 1200 bucks chasing me around for two weeks with that process server. <laughs> be, a, wow. be a dick. Oh, hey, one War. of those dudes, one of those dudes almost got killed uh, about, it, it was still within the first year that I was home, but my wife and I were already married. We were living, I was renting my, my, the house I grew up in, my grandparents' house. Uh, my, my grandpa was in a home and my grandma had passed and the estate had this house. So we, me and my wife were renting it, right? Well, my cousin, who's a fuck up, for like a couple months he had rented it, but like couldn't pay rent or whatever. And, you know, that was out, right? They just, he wasn't there. Well, I had gone to the store or, or no, I think I was coming home from work. I take that back because it was late. It was probably around 11 o'clock. And I was about two miles from my house and my wife calls me and goes, Bobby, somebody's rattling the front door. And I'm like, are you sure? And like already my foot's all the way to the fucking floor. right? <laughs> and I'm going, I'm doing like, like almost a hundred miles an hour down ball road, which is like one of the roads that Disneyland's on. I'm just like, Whoa! right. And uh, I mean, like I hit, I hit a railroad track and jumped it straight, got air, <laughs> right. Trying to get home. Right. And, and she's like, no, for sure, for sure. You hear it. And I'm like, just stay in the room. It's all right. I'm almost home. Right. 
and got there just as this dude was trying to pull away and I just blocked him in front, like to where he wouldn't go nowhere and I was out of the car. What the fuck? And then he was just like, oh, uh, are you David? Well, I'm looking for David. And he starts to say my cousin's name, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, no, 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 man. Who are you? And he's like, I'm supposed to serve these papers. He's been saying, just like you said, can't find him anywhere. He's dodging every known thing. I was like, well, you almost just got beat to death right now, dude. I'm like, he ain't here. Don't be touching on people's front door. Because I asked him, I'm like, why was my front door moving? He was like, I was sticking this in, in, I was wedging it in the door. He had some letter, you know, like he was trying to, but I mean, one of those things, man, to where like, like there was some heart pounding. And like, when I saw that dude coming out of the thing, I'm sure his heart was probably pounding a little bit more than mine was uh, at that point. But, but yeah, um, all types of, tricks like that one of the things you got to do for get to with a with a, a child to like be that dude at the end is just consistency like you got to be that rock right so so kids need like especially young kids they need the routine right they they need uh the the structure when they start bouncing around all over the place it gets confusing and scary for them the younger they are, especially, but even in kids that we wouldn't think it wouldn't be because they're older than too. So as long as they know that you're the one that remains like, like your old faithful, you know, old reliable, and you're, you're the one that they can go to that. It's not going to be this way one day and this way, the next day and this way, the, as long as they know they can come to you and, and you're that person that right there makes all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world. And I want to agree with what Phil was saying. And I've said this before on Twitter and, and probably in other podcasts. A good lawyer is worth his weight in gold. That's real deal talk. Like if you can afford a good attorney and that's whatever you're going through, family court, criminal court, <laughs> civil court, whatever. If you can get a good attorney, it's worth it. If, if, if the desired result is is what's important to you i want to echo something that a uh, text had said which is in the chat he said you'll see the worst of everyone and it goes to both of your points in that when you when when you cross the point of no return you're all in the ships have been burned this is no longer the wife who is making you breakfast in bed this is no longer the woman you married this is now the person that you're going to be chopping off and out of your life you're cutting off your fucking arm you know, like you were done with this. It's gone. It's going to be rough, but you go forward and you're in it to win. You're not in it to, to settle. You're not in it to, to, to split. You're in it to win. I know if, if I were going through this, I mean, it's, it's everything. Like whatever we're coming out of this, it's for me. It's 100% on what I want, what I'm going to get, what I'm going for. It's no longer, oh, well, let's be nice. And, you know, that's how guys end up, you know, having the kids one week in a month. That being said, though, you, you're not going to have some young child in a court proceeding, like sitting there in the courtroom watching all the drama unfold and all the BS coming out. That's not going to happen. So where they're going to find out is not from you. Do you get what I mean? Like, let her be the crazy one that's just like, or whatever, because you're that rock. You're the one that's being dependable. You're the one that, that doesn't want to destroy a young child's mind that you know you want to see blossom that's not going to be you let it be them that makes all the difference in the world that's 100 percent correct because especially when you start dogging them in court they can't let that shit go here's the deal with my divorce in the end I didn't even I didn't even go in front of the judge. He whipped her with paper until she was completely fucking broke. Like broke her down to nothing. Like down below a 500 credit score. Broke. And I'll never forget it, you know, he's like, "Okay." He called me one day, he's like, "Okay, we're done." This is your attorney? Yeah. Yep. And, and so he goes, maybe down to the courthouse. I'm like, for real? I got to deal with this? You know, he's like, no, you don't have to deal with anything. I'm like, she's already signed everything. I'm like, what? <laughs> cool. So I go down. I sign my paperwork right there in front of the clerk's clerk's desk. He goes, man, let me give you a point of advice. He goes, two things are going to happen. Your ex-wife 
is either going to step up and become a mom or she's going to become a party girl. And over the last nine years, she's flopped to the party girl and it's costing her now. It really is. Her life is a literal fucking train wreck. And no matter how bad you want to stoop, no matter how bad you want to fight, let your attorney handle it. There's been times where I've been in my attorney's office literally yelling and screaming at him like I was going to fucking kill him. <laughs> <laughs> literally. And he wanted to kill me a few times. You know what I mean? But in the end, it worked. And it's working, according to what I told you earlier. It's continuing to work. You know what I mean? So don't find a weakling for an attorney. That's all I got for that, hey. man. My my brother hit when he he got custody in California too. That, I mean, this is how bad this girl was. Uh, he got a good attorney. Immediate was just like, oh, she's a party girl. We're gonna do some drug testing. We're gonna do this and that. We're gonna do whichever. Right? Got all the stuff. Hey, so so then her way out. What, what's the woman's weapon? Right? Oh well, he molested our kid. Oh, so geez. she threw that on him in court. Right? My my lawyer when or, or excuse me my brother's lawyer when when she did that he was like oh don't worry we're we're gonna take her apart she's done and let it play out but it sucks because at that point CPS gets involved and they're interviewing kids and they're doing all this other stuff. so it's like it's a it's a crappy and then plus you're throwing uh, you're throwing on my brother that he's a chomo on top of it right so uh, that lawyer when he was able to cross-examine her uh, a little bit later on in the proceedings, got her to admit while she was up there that she lied. And the second that she admitted that she was like, okay, I lied, boop, 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 boop. Right after that, he called for some kind of motion and the judge was like, I mean, he didn't say these words, but the judge was like, fuck you, bitch. And like totally just took everything from her, gave my brother foot. Like it all happened. Like just boop, 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 boop. Get the fuck out of my courtroom. Like yeah. that. So like a good attorney, so worth their weight in gold. Because that could have been, who knows what that could have been if my brother just had some hubbub bullshit. Who knows? But this guy was experienced and saw the, the weaknesses and like Phil was saying earlier, went for the throat and got it. That's fucking wild, man. This is this is, but this is real men's lives. Like this is reality. Mm -hmm. Like to me, it's fucking insane. But I mean, like, I'm I'm a day a bad day away from it. You know, like you never know what's coming down the pipeline. You know, obviously we all want to ride out to the sunset, but again, that's why we have this conversation. So men who've gone through it, men who have experience, can pass that on. The next guy, you know, maybe some guy who's listening to this is like, you know what? This guy's only fifty bucks an hour. This guy's two hundred bucks an hour, but this fucking dude's gonna get it. Try like 450 bucks an hour. Yeah. See, I don't even know the fucking numbers, man. If yeah. they're anywhere hey. less than 450 an hour for billing, they don't have their shit together. They're desperate. Hey, you want that's, that, oh, No, that's on top of give me $5,000. So yeah, you retainer. I'm your lawyer. Yeah, right. I'm going to take your case for, <laughs> for five, five grand. See, I'm a repeat customer now. So he only charged me thirty five hundred to keep him on retainer. <laughs> That's a nice guy. What a swell guy. Yeah, yeah but he only thirty five. Goddamn new Escalade and boat and everything else. You know, I'm like you, fucker, Mark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All right, gentlemen, we've hit all the bullet points. So, and we had our closing statements. I think so. Let, let's go over, Bobby, for guys that might have some questions, some guys that want to know, like, kind of where you're going from here. What do you have coming down the pipeline in the future? And what's your closing? Uh, where, where can guys find you? Okay, so in the immediate future, I'm leaving tomorrow for Romania. I'll be there. I'm going to be in Vegas in at the beginning of October for Cernovich's uh, Vegas event that he's having there. Uh, towards the end of October, I'll be with you gentlemen Yeah. Uh, at the 21 convention. We're going to – hey, and let me tell you something. If anybody's still on the fence – about going to the 21 convention, just Hunter is worth it, man. I mean, you want <laughs> this dude right here. If, if you're looking for someone that is going to stay up with you until the sun comes up, like talking about the important stuff, 
I watched him do it like every night, man. There were nights I came down there were like, hey, man, do, do we need to like, uh, you know, get him back up to the room or what's going on? Because he was that that committed. So that's coming down the pipe. Um, and, and I'm really looking forward to, to hanging out, especially uh, the three of us. Um, and then the, the cigar that we just released, uh, Ivan and I, the Dewey Ray cigars, those are um, – I don't have the link up at my site yet because he literally he's still making links. He just we just went online with it yesterday. But you can go uh, currently to Ivan's uh, Empalador line. So it's uh, em, em, Empalador or is it Empalador yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the link in the chat. I meant yeah, to put yeah. it on, on below the video, but he really did just come out with all this. <laughs> right. Yeah. He literally yesterday. I mean, it's, it's just yesterday. So, so that's, what's coming, um, in, in the immediate future. And, and for the guys that are going through or, or maybe going through this, or this seems like, uh, through a divorce or, or through separation, or this seems like it, it can be a real possibility. It's real easy to get stuck in despair. It really can be. That's one of the biggest things is if, if you let yourself go down that road, you can, you can go down that way. What you have to keep doing is putting one foot in front of the other and making the best day that you can for your future and by extension, your kid's future. And just keep being that dependable, solid rock that that kid needs. Not anything that's, that's a change. Be the thing that's constant in your child's life. That, that your child knows you can depend on and that'll make all the difference. And for those in the chat, I dropped the link for the cigars as well as the link to follow, follow Bobby on Twitter. He's quite Thank active you. on there. That's where most of us are engaging in real time, real quick, you know, hopping on the quick one off. So if you want to DM, you want to reach out, you want to have that conversation, or like you said, you know, if you're going through this and you have questions that you need answered or you want some advice, you know, hop on there, shoot a DM. It's as easy as that. And also grab the cigar. DMs are always open. DMs are always box. open to whoever. Yeah. So, so if that's, if you feel you want to drop a DM, real Bobby Dino at, at Twitter and feel free. Phil, what do you got coming up down the, the pipeline? Uh, <clears throat> quite a few things. First off, you can find me at uh, Evolve Phil on Twitter. And I'm, I'm around there. I talk a little shit from time to time. And uh, if you're going through anything or if you can relate to anything that I said tonight or you have any questions, just direct message me, man. I'll be happy to talk to you. It's all good. Um, I'm really stoked about October in Orlando. I had a great time last year. I'm really looking forward to 21 Con this October. See Hunter, Bobby, everybody else. You know, I'll second what Bobby said. If you're on the fence about jumping in to head down there, I put it on Twitter. A few days ago, definitely jump in and, and come experience it. It's a good time. I don't know about staying up all night. I got to get my sleep. My nutrition. <laughs> I can't do that. You know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great situation, you know, as far as uh, being able to uh, visit with personalities that you possibly might speak to or follow on Twitter or on the internet. And uh, you can learn a lot of great stuff from a lot of great people down there. Um, and uh, the caveat for this conversation is just just to visualize that tunnel, gentlemen. You know, if you're really going through it and, you know, you need to you really need to just know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how fucking painful this is that you're going through. If, if you're looking around at your life right now and you're going, man, you know, this is happening. All my money's gone. My wife is gone. My kids hate me. My boss hates me. You know, you need to start developing a network, whether it's, you know, uh, online. You know, Hunter's got his deal going on with the Fraternity Excellence. I'm actually a member of that. And it's it's a it's a great resource. You need some something. You can reach out to anybody in that fraternity. They're great folk. You know, guys like Bobby, Ivan, everybody else. You know, you just don't paint yourself into a corner because eventually – in one year's time, if you give this a year, if you go, okay, I'm right here right now, but in one year, where am I going to be? It's going to be a completely different place. You will get through this and you will survive. You got to hold your shit together for your children, though. You got to hold your shit together because they're relying on you. 
there's no other option with that. You know, so once again, you need to chat about it. Hit me up. If you don't need to chat about it. Cool. I'll be shit posting from time to time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Bob, you have a great time out there with those guys. Hey, thank you, man. That's safe that's, travels. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's a long I'd time. I expect to see a multitude of pictures, brother. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Going to make the phone die on a daily basis taking pictures. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Phil, appreciate you coming on. Bobby, especially appreciate you coming on knowing you've got long travels tomorrow. For everybody that tuned in, hey. go ahead. No, I'm, I, it's this is uh, this is one of the most important things we could be doing. The, these groups are are really beneficial to a lot of people. I get feedback on it myself, and always this is no problem being there. I appreciate that, especially for the patriarchs. You know, it's one of those things that's that's near and dear to my heart, and near and dear to what it is we're doing because it has that family connection to it. The topics aren't about, you know, spinning all the plates. It's topics aren't about, you know, the theory behind things. It's real world. How can you apply this to family living? How can you apply this to being a father? And that's incredibly important. And when it comes to shielding your children from divorce, you're the shield. You know, you're the shield and the spear. You've got to protect your children. You've got to attack for them. You've got to be the one who builds the bridges. You know, you've got to be the one who, who has your head up, you know, your shoulders back, your eyes forward. And even though things are so hard, you allow your children to see, like, my dad's got it. He's got it together and he's going to be okay. And we're going to be okay. And this is really sad and it hurts my soul, but we're going to be okay because my dad's okay. And that's what I want you to take from this. You have resources to help you be okay. You know, this show, you know, nobody gets anywhere without support. When you look at this show, you've got the three sponsors, you've got Tactical Soap, which has been on here forever, you know, taking care of this show, helping the men out, offering discounts to all those who follow with uh, the code RMD for 10% off. It's always been that that thing, oh, tactical soap, shower like a man, testosterone levels are going to rise. But guess what? When shit hits the fan, that brand stood by this company. When shit hits the fan in your life, who's going to stand by you? It could be your parents. It could be your siblings. It could be a group of men. You look at Jack Murphy, he's got liminal order. Uh, you look at Ryan Mickler, he's got order of man. Myself, we have the fraternity of excellence. And FOE is now a sponsor of this show as well. So then you follow that. You know, all these, all, we're all coming together to help one another succeed. And it's one of those things where it's like this, this conglomeration where even the separate groups are supporting one another. So inside FOE, we've got single men, married men, divorced men, and they come together to help each other because they're men. So reach out to men. So when shit hits the fan, you have someone to fall back on. Tate's War Room, another sponsor of this, bringing men together. Do not isolate yourself with, a, with a, the, the weird you know, notion that I don't need help. Real men don't have to reach out and ask for help. You fucking do need some help because the whole fucking world's lined up against you. So use it. You've got men on this panel right now throwing ropes, bearing their soul. We're not talking about these, the theory behind intersexual dynamics. We're talking about real world shit of what men have gone through and what can help you get through this as well. You'll survive. You'll thrive as long as you do the work. With that said, thank you for tuning in tonight. I appreciate you coming on the Red Man Group. Patriarchs Edition, every Thursday heading forward from here, you'll be 